It's a great pleasure to be here in Lithuania, in Vilnius. Not the first time, but first time for such an event. Uh, and I'm going to talk about exotic or synthetic quantum matter. In fact, I do not know much about um, quantum matter at all. But therefore, I will allow myself to, let me check, tell you something about special, maybe not matter, but states with maximal entanglement between subsystems. And let me first mention my collaborators, two of them, uh, Swail and Arul from India, from Chennai, and three others from Poland, Adam Burkhardt now in Amsterdam, Wojciech Bruzer in Krakow, and Grzegorz Reichel Miejdzioć now in Barcelona. So, let me make a brief reminder. If you have bipartite system, system A, system B, Everything is simple. What is simple? We can define product states. So we say that such a pure state is separable if it has a product form. All other states are entangled. This is relatively easy to check. In the simplest possible case, we know there exists a maximally entangled Bell state. You know the form. For instance, 0, 0, plus 1, 1. It means if we perform a measurement on one side, we can predict the outcome on the other side. Technically, you can take any state psi bipartite and expand it in a product basis. Now, in one language, it's called Schmidt decomposition, in other singular value decomposition of this coefficient matrix C. And now those lambda singular values will determine entanglement, basically, Entanglement can be defined as degree of mixing of partial trace. Partial trace state sigma is just positive matrix C, C dagger. So its spectrum lambda determines entanglement. If there is only one non-zero singular value lambda, then the state is separable. In the other cases, entanglement, entangled, and we usually quantify entanglement with such a simple formula. Entropy of entanglement is just standard for Neumann entropy of partial trace or the Shannon entropy of the vector lambda. Well, this approach works also for higher dimensional systems, let's say two qubits. Then this bell like maximally entangled state has d, mm, d terms and it's maximally entangled because all those singular values lambda are equal. In a sense, partial trace is maximally mixed. So partial trace CC dagger is maximally mixed, one over D. So this matrix C is unitary up to rescaling. For instance, if you take such a state, look, by two qubit state, zero, 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 one, one, zero, minus one, one, it's maybe not so simple to see that indeed is equivalent to the Bell state. And to show this, it's enough to notice that this matrix is just a Hadamard matrix, which is unitary. Look, 1, 1, 1, and here minus 1. So it's a unitary matrix. Then it means that the both Schmidt coefficients are equal. The state is uh, equivalent to the Bell state. It's maximally entangled. So this was simple for two parties. Now we are going to talk about multi-parted systems. Now, a simple question, what is multi? For me, two is bipartite and three and more is already multi. For me, definition is simple. There is a simple saying, tres faciunt collegium, so three makes a team. Three is already multi for me. Moreover, there is a simple obs geometric observation. In 2D, we have, we have, let's say, two-dimensional objects like a square. It's are much simpler than three-dimensional objects like a cube. So this analogy will be used mm, very soon. Here, for me, multi means three or more. And now you'll see immediately where the problem starts. If I have three partite state, let's say A, B, C, then this pure state in the product basis can be written not by a matrix, by a tensor, T, I, J, K, with three, three indices. And mathematicians, of course, know a lot about tensors, but everything with tensors is much more complicated than with matrices. With matrices, we know 
how to find the rank of a matrix, how to produce, um, find eigenvalues, singular value decomposition, and so on. And then for tensor, everything is much more complicated. Even to compute the rank of a tensor or norm of a tensor, there are different norms, it's much, much, much more complicated. In short, the properties of tensors, if you have many indices, determine the entanglement properties of such pure states. They are only pure states of multipartite systems. And then there appear a simple question, a natural question. If you have a general case of n subsystems with d levels each, which states has extremal properties in the sense that it is the most entangled? So how do you think? What is the answer? No ideas? Basically, I don't know the answer. Why? Because it depends. It depends on the measure chosen. In the bipartite case situation is simple, Bell state is the only, only one distinguished. All other states are less entangled. Here, for three qubits or high, higher dimensional system, basically depending on the measure of entanglement, different states are distinguished. For instance, there's the famous GHZ state. Okay, this works, but rather slowly. Yes, um, which consists of two terms, then the W state, which consists of three terms, they are kind of different, they cannot be transformed from one to another, and in short, there are some measures of entanglement with respect to which once GHZ is more entangled, with respect to another measure, W is more entangled. So this only shows that multi is more difficult than two. If you have multi partites entanglement, everything is more interesting, but more complicated. Well, there is an interesting definition. So, absolutely maximally entangled state. And in fact, it was started like 20 years ago. There was an important paper by Scott, many other papers. I will mention here only a few. And this one from 2008 is kind of special. There was a five Italian authors, among them Parisi. So it's also nice for us that even a Nobel Prize laureate got interested into this problem, even though he wrote like 200 papers on other topics. So the definition is simple. I will take four pens here, two blue and two red. So bell states, generalized bell states are maximally entangled with respect to partition blue against red. And absolutely maximally entangled are maximally entangled for all three partitions. There are three possible partitions. Is it clear to you? And there are more constraints. It's, of course, easier to construct such a red-blue state, which is maximally entangled. But if you additionally assume you require maximal entanglement in other partitions, it's much more complicated. Well, OK, I hope to. Uh, convince you that, at least theoretically, you can do it, and concerning practical uh, well, realization, we have to discuss it later. So, the definition is simple, it's 20 years old. We say that such a state of four parties with d levels each is looked described by a tensor with four indices. It's called absolutely maximally entangled, if for any choice of, in this case, n is four. So, uh, two subsystems, the partial trace is maximally mixed. So if you take such a state psi, you say, ah, partial trace with respect to AB is maximally mixed, 1 over d squared, equal to partial trace over, let's say, BD equal to partial trace over BC. In the more mathematical language, you take this tensor and you make flattening, which means from the hypercube, you squash it to the matrix. So you change indices from uh, four indices to uh, bipartite indices with Greek letters, and for all possible uh, flattenings, you require that those uh, flattened tensors are proportional to unitary matrices. Sometimes in literature, some people call those tensors perfect, or sometimes those matrices are called too unitary. Why too unitary? Because they are unitary, but after reshaping, reordering of indices, they are still unitary. So well. You can ask a simple question. For what number of subsystems n and the local dimension d such states do exist? This is the table, nice table produced by uh, Felix Huber and Nikolai Videlka. In principle, so look, here is local dimension d. It goes from 2 in principle to infinity here. 
And here is the number of parties from two to four. Yes, I have to learn how to work. it works, yes. And so on, in principle to infinity. And as you can guess, green means they exist, red do not exist. Here I will emphasize there are no such states for four qubits. So simplest possible case, again, if I take those four pens and consider qubits, such states do not exist. This is known by an important paper by Higuchi and Sudbury, also 20, 22 years old. And then in 2021, there was an important question open, namely whether such states here for, look, four parties with six levels each do exist. This was the status in 2021, but of course there are many other questions open, so all white, here in this direction, something is known, something is not known. In general, of course, this table is not complete, so there is still a lot of work can be done concerning finding or disproving such uh, existence of such states. There was maybe interesting development here, it was a nice paper that for seven qubits such states or eight qubits do not exist. And they do not exist, this is known for a larger number of qubits. In this direction, everything is red. Well, here I will change gears a little bit, and I will ask you what can you see here. You can see here 16 cards. Maybe if you even don't play bridge, you will recognize immediately there's a very, very special pattern. Namely, I take 16 cards, I take four jacks, four queens, four uh, aces, and I put them in such a way that in each row, each column, you have only a single card of each suit and a single card of each rank. This is called, in mathematics, two mutually orthogonal Latin squares. Mutually orthogonal means that all cards are different, in short. Or Greco-Latin squares. Greco-Latin because I use here, uh, I would like to play bridge, cards. But Euler, who worked on this problem uh, almost 300 years ago, okay, 250, uh, he used Greek letters instead of uh, cards and Greek letters instead of colors. So therefore they called them Greco-Latin square. So you see the definition. This is the example, but definition is simple. In each row, each column, there are only a single card of each suit and of each rank. So you understand this pattern. And now I will try to convince you that existence of such patterns is somehow related to existence of our states, multipartite entangled states. But first I will mention the following thing. Such patterns cannot exist for d equal two. Why? If you have two aces and two kings, if you put, let's say, two red cards here, red ace and red king, it's clear that you cannot put the uh, blue king neither here nor there, because you would have two kings or two aces in the uh, single column. So such objects, constellations, do not exist for size 2. They do exist for, for size 3, 4, and 5. In fact, you can show they exist for any prime number, any power of prime, but a strange situation occurs already for, equal, for d equals 6. Why 6? Well, 6, maybe you know, is the simplest number which is neither a prime nor a power of prime, because we know well 6 is 2 times 3. This we know, and this simple fact has immense implications. Strangely enough, the famous Euler problem, it, it had a kind of a practical application. Euler was then in St. Petersburg, and then the rumor says that uh, officers wanted to generous, uh, prepare a parade in front of a Tsar. If they took 25 officers from different units of different ranks, they could order them in size a nice 5 times 5 equal 25 pattern of officers. Now they took the sixth unit, had six different uniforms. They want to arrange them like this. So look, six different um, units, six different uniforms, six different ranks. And in front of the Tsar, they want to arrange it like this. They couldn't. So they ask Euler, and even Euler could not neither find the solution nor prove that it doesn't exist, but he was kind of certain the solution does not exist. Only 121 years later, there was a paper by Gaston Terry, who published it in 2019 and some people claim this is the last important problem in mathematics solved but by not a mathematician. He was a lawyer, but he was clever enough. No, no, okay, it's not so funny, because uh, look, he realized there is like 8 million of possibilities, and his mathematical achievement was to reduce it to, let's say, 4,000, and then checking case by case all of them. He was in Algeria, and some people say he had nothing better to do 
because he was sent there to Algeria and he had a good time to, to enjoy the problem. But then he, all mathematicians of this age were very much impressed by this result. Who even, you can imagine, if Euler could not do it, it's not a simple task. But look, now I want to combine those two topics. Namely, here is a simpler case, this Greek or Latin square of size 3, written in the notation of Euler, Greek or Latin letters, or my bridge notation, but in information science notation, we rather use numbers 0, 0, 1, 1, and so on. And now look, we look at this pattern, translate it into numbers, and then make the following thing. We take the address, like 0, 0, first square, put black here, ah, the first two data define address, now two next numbers I put here, and I do it case by case. So the second box has address 0, 1, first row, second, uh, first col row, second column, the contents is 1, 2. Then I put this next box here, and in this way I generate a state of exactly nine terms. This is a very special state. By the way, this is the state I was talking to you before. Yes, you, you got it. And now look, because we have this Euler-like property, there are no repetitions of colors in rows and columns, you can easily check that this very state has very special property. It is an absolutely maximally entangled state. If you compute right projector, compute partial traces, whatever two subsystems you will choose, because of this property, you get maximally mixed state. Why? What is the average color here? In a sense, it's white. I will define white as average. There is no advantage of spades or, car or um, diamonds or clubs. So white means average is uniform. It is exactly the same property we require, require here, that the partial trace is uniform, which implies that the state, pure state was initially maximally entangled, and this is done for any possible uh, partition. And then there is a quantum code. If you know such a state, you can easily define the code, which means instead of zero, you have a logical zero, which is obtained by taking first row, First, because this starts with zero, and take the last three digits, and then this code enables you, if one uh, treat changes, to recover the information. So in a sense, those states are important for many different protocols, many different reasons, but in short, they produce some quantum error correction codes. This is a simple example. So look, now we know what is the standard classical Latin square, and here was a nice definition from Musto and Vicari only, let's say, seven years ago. Uh, well, uh, and the idea is simple. They took this Latin square, but instead of discrete objects like cards or officers, they took states, and the requirement, classical was they are different. Quantum requirements, they are orthogonal. So you take, uh, in this case, d square states, such that in each row, each column, you have orthogonal bases, so they produce nice quantum measurements, uh, Ludwig von Neumann measurements. This is a simple example with some states. You can check in all rows and columns, the, uh, those, uh, you get orthogonal states which form, which form bases. In a sense, they are not classical, because here you use the superposition states. Mathematically speaking, the standard combinatorics, look, deals with discrete symbols, one, two, three, up to D, like cards or numbers or officers, and the permutation group, because you can permute the objects. In quantum theory, we use larger setup. We embed permutation group into a larger continuous unitary group, and instead of those discrete objects, we take a state which can be transformed in a continuous way. And here I will mention the very important seminal uh, thesis by Gerhard Zauner written in Vienna. And again, some people claim this is the last important piece of physics written in German. Because now we usually write something in English, and this is really important thesis written in German, and was so important that 10 years after it was written, they translated into English. For those who don't know German, but here we should at the Humboldt meeting, yes? Okay, okay, but even if you don't know German, you can study this five minutes, yes. So, in short, it's possible to find the analog of the classical objects to make it quantum. In a sense, classically, you have d square pairs of symbols that are different, there is no repetition. In quantum, we take d square bipartite states, which are mutually orthogonal, 
this is the analog of this, they are conditions, they are different. And two other conditions means that those partial traces of sums of projectors are white, in the sense they are proportional to identity. And this is exactly the requirement related to existence of maximally, absolutely maximally entangled state. If you take classical objects and put them into uh, such a uh, bracket, so this is the product state, you get classical objects. So now the key point is what happens if you allow here to use entangled states, so superposition of such states in each square or, uh, of such an object. And the answer is sometimes you can get new interesting results. So first statement I will do that make that the existence of such quantum orthogonal Latin square is just by construction equivalent to existence of those absolutely maximally entangled states of four subsystems with d levels each. And having um, such an object phi ij, so this quantum orthogonal Latin square, you can explicitly write such a state, or maybe in this form of this tensor, which has required properties. And the most important result is that such an eg solution exists for the Euler case, for the case of six times six plate. So again, there was no classical solution if you had a single officer in each box. But if you allow entanglement, so here this means like a superposition of, let's say, uh, rock and uh, bishop, then such a result exists. In fact, here, this is not the full solution. So now the size of this figure represents its amplitude. So the larger figure, this larger amplitude. But here, this is a complex general matrix. So what is missing is the faces. Here are faces, but strangely enough, all those faces are commensurate with a, tw a 20th roof of identity. So here, those numbers determine the faces. They are just number k, which decorates the faces. So entire solution is written like this. You can only optically see the number. Let's say the colors are also white. If you make average in drawing column, you have the, let's say, an, the same amount of col color, greenish, yellowish, or, or pinkish, or the uh, an, uh, same an amount of queens or kings. And this is the standard, more standard notion of this solution from goes from 0, 0 to 5, 5. And essentially enough, those numbers, A, B, and C, they are very simple. We found them analytically. So for instance, there is like Pythagorean theorem, which is here. And we decided to call this object the golden state because those two numbers, A uh, and B, they said the ratio is just a golden number. So I think I, I'm almost done. I will only mention that such four dice golden state does exist. Four dice, why? Because dice has six faces. So in a sense, four q hex state we generated corresponds to four dices. And if you are able to generate such a state and measure two, uh, get results of measurement performed of, of any two subsystems, you can uh, find the result which will be obtained on two other subsystems. Well, I'm almost done, but now I will mention well, what is related to matter and exotic synthetic matter. I would say, well, from my perspective, a nice and exotic, let's say, entangled state of matter would be uh, such a system with a huge number of parties n, such that if you choose any two subsystems, each of size d, then the entanglement between all of them is maximal. And of course, the natural question exists. What is the minimal local dimension that such a state exists if n is arbitrary? Then it is known that such a family exists for d equal n. But now the question is whether you can find such a solution for d smaller than n. And of course, from the practical point of view, it's interesting to check whether such states can be realized in an experiment. For the GHG states, by the way, they are not absolutely maximally entangled. There were first such states for 12 qubits. Now, recently, with IBM machines, they were they gone to 20, then to even 27, with fidelity much smaller than one, but still. However, I would like to advertise not only th those states absolutely maximally entangled of six qubits, they are still not realized in the lab. And another option is those maximally entangled states of four qubits. They live in 81 dimensional. Hilbert space, I think, is also an interesting uh, target for an experiment because they are used in many different, in many different theory protocols. So I'm really, I'm really almost done. So uh, no last two pages. So 
multiple that strongly entangled, let's say, exotic states can be useful for many different applications. For instance, quantum error correction codes, quantum communication, and so on. A simple statement is that such states do exist in the case of four subsystems, which six levels each. And our result was obtained in 21, exactly 120 years, uh, one years later after Atari, which obtained his result 121 years later after Euler. And this uh, result, yes, implies existence of solution of this quantum analog. It's not a classical problem of Euler, quantum analog of the 36 offsets problem of Euler and optimal bipartite unitary gate with maximal entangling power, such a perfect tensor with four indices, and non-additive quantum error correction code. So I hope such useful exotic states are, uh, they are, well, uh, should be realized in an experiment. And now I will finish with one more statement. Last year, in April 2022, we published second paper on the same topic about 36 entangled officers of Euler. And we have written in April, 2022. It is sad to note that these Russian officers recently left their parade ground in St. Petersburg, where they belong, and went a thousand miles south. However, explicit analytical results described in this work strongly suggest that the officers might eventually suffer a transition into a highly entangled state. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's always a pity to, to see that we are running out of time, especially after interesting talks. But I guess that even uh, on, if it's coming on the expense of lunchtime, we should have at least one question. So please, do we have questions? No? Uh, but mm, there is no... There is no way of realizing some kind of quantitative entanglement measure for uh, for such a high dimensional. But theoretically, uh, or in, uh, mathematically speaking, or experimentally? Uh, Mathemat mathematically. No, mathematically, well, there are many different measures of entanglement you can compute. And for instance, this one average and degree of entanglement with respect to average splitting is by construction maximal. Okay. Yes, so this is simple. Of course, there's another like geometric measure of entanglement, which is the distance to the closest separable state. Mm -hmm. This is a different issue, but there are several measures for which those states are really distinguished. They achieve the maximal values. So you can distinguish uh, whether the state is maximally... By construction it is, because it has maximal entanglement with respect to all possible partitions. So the average entanglement is by construction maximal. Yes, but by quantitative, I mean if you're, if you're away from this uh, maximally entangled state, can you... Can okay, you of measure? course, you compute the average entropy. Okay. No, no. Uh, mathematically, everything is simple, okay. but it's not so simple to realize it in the lab. Ah, okay, okay. <laughs>